Hi everyone. Today we are going to analyze a beam by using direct stiffness method. So this is me, Dilruba KM. And today we will see how can we analyze a beam structure by using direct stiffness method. As all the steps, all the methods that I have followed, I have developed a step-by-step -step procedure for analyzing of the beams by using direct stiffness method. And these are the 10 steps. First step is to calculate degree of freedom, that is kinematic indeterminacy. Then we will assign a global coordinate. And third step, we will provide or divide the entire beam section into several elements. And the fourth step, we will divide the element stiffness matrix for each element. And in fifth step, we, have, we will develop a global stiffness matrix from the element stiffness matrices. In sixth step, we have to calculate fixed end moments and end reactions. And from that, we will develop equivalent joint load matrix. And that is the seventh step. And eighth step, from the equivalent joint load matrix and the global stiffness matrix, we will calculate displacement matrix by using the equation delta is equal to K inverse P. The last step is to find out the elemental force. Element force means shear force and bending moment of each beam element that we have divided. Okay. And so we will be getting the shear force and bending moment for each elemental beams. From that, we can draw bending moment and shear force diagram. Okay. So, let us see how can we do this by using an example. So, I have considered a question from September 2020 BTEC degree examination conducted by APG Abdul Kalam Technological University. The question is, analyze a given continuous beam by using direct stiffness method. Take EIS constant. So, this is a two-span continuous beam. So let us follow the steps. That is, our first step was to calculate kinematic indeterminacy. So calculating kinematic indeterminacy, we will consider the supports of beams. So here we have three supports, A, B and C. And all the supports are provided with a hinge support. So hinge support have one degrees of freedom. That is only rotation is possible in the hinge supports. So we can say the degree of freedom at A is 1, B is 1 and C is 1. So we have total degrees of freedom 3. Okay. So 1 at A, 1 at B and 1 at C. So the kinematic indeterminacy of the structure is 3. Now moving to step number 2 that is to assign global coordinates. Here I am giving global coordinates only to those degrees of freedom. So I am giving 1 at A second coordinate at B and third coordinate at C. Okay. So, we are going to calculate the displacement due to this moment at each supports. And in third step, we will divide the entire beams into several elements. Here we have two spans. So, I am dividing the entire beam into two beams, AB and BC. Now, we will assign local coordinates for each element. Local coordinates are assigned like this. At vertical or shear for shear at A and moment at A, shear at B, moment at B, and shear at B, moment at B, shear at C, and moment at C. And for naming the local coordinate, I can either use 1 star, 2 star, 3 star, 4 star, but in later steps, we will be using this values. And uh, the numbers may get confused with the global coordinates. So instead of using the 1 star, 2 star, I'm just writing it as BA, MA, BB and MB. Okay, so local coordinate corresponding to shear at A, local coordinate corresponding to moment at A, local coordinate corresponding to shear at B and moment at B. And here BB, MB and uh, BC, MC. Okay. So, I am just naming the local coordinates in this manner. Next step is to develop stiffness matrix, element stiffness matrix for each element. So, this is a standard matrix that you should buy hard. This is a standard matrix. You can either write in this way or this way. 
both are same. So just apply the values of EI and L. And in the question it is given EI is constant for all the members. So I am just keeping the EI as it is. And now I apply the length that is 8, 8 meters in this equation, in this matrix. And the matrix will become like this 0 0.023 minus 0 0.023. 0.94 minus 0.023 minus 0.094 and just substituting the length as a okay so you will get this as the element stiffness matrix for a b now for b c also we have to find out the element stiffness matrix since length of a b and b c both are 8 from the question so the both matrices are of similar okay both matrices are similar next we will see the global stiffness matrix so the global stiffness matrix will be of size n by n where n is a number of n by n where n is a number of degrees of freedom and we know here degree of freedom is 3 so the global stiffness matrix will be of order 3 by 3 so it will be a 3 by 3 matrix okay and the coefficients of the global stiffness matrix will be according to the global coordinates that we have provided so look at the step number two there we can see the global coordinate provided at a was moment at a and global coordinate provided at b is moment at b and at C, it is moment at C. So, global stiffness matrix will have the coefficients corresponding to moment at A, moment at B, and moment at C. Okay. So, from element stiffness matrices of the elements A, B, and B, C, we will find out the elements corresponding, coefficients corresponding to the global stiffness matrix. So, I said, only MB, MB, MC is required. So, when we consider the element stiffness matrix case as AB, you can see we have VA, VB, MA, and MB. And similarly, for case star BC, we have BB, MB, BC, and MC. But we did only MA, MB, MC. So, except MA, MB, MC, I am cutting off all the values which are other than MA. MB and MC. Okay, so I am going to cut this value or the column corresponding to VA and VB. Similarly, the row corresponding to VA and VB. And here we have we don't need VB and VC. And the row corresponding to VB and VC is also neglected. So what is rest is what we required. So what is rest is 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.25 and 0 0.5. Here we have 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.25 and 0.5. Fine. Now let us see how can we place this value in the global stiffness matrix. So the first value is corresponding to MA and MA. So look at the figure. Look at the element stiffness matrix of K star A, B. We have MA and MA. That is the value is 0 0.5. But in case star BC, there is no MA. So, we don't have to consider the case star BC for this coefficient. So, here the coefficient is 0.5. Fine. Now, the next, next coefficient is MA, MB. So, we will look at MA, MB. So, the next coefficient is 0.25. Here, no MA. So, we don't have to consider case star BC for this also. So, the value is MA, MB. So, it corresponding to this value that is 0.25. Now, we have MA, MC, but in case star AB, there is no MC term. And in case star BC, there is no MA term. So, MA, MC is not present in both element stiffness matrices. So, we will keep that value as 0. Now, moving to the next coefficient corresponding to MB, MA. So, we will see MB, MA. So, this is the coefficient. 0.25 since m is not here we don't have to look at it so we have only one value 0.25 
Now, next value is corresponding to MB, MB. So, look at this. Case are AB, we have MB, MB 0.5. And case are BC also, we have MB, MB. That is also 0.5. Okay. So, what we will do is, we will add up both the values. From the value, from case are AB and add the case are BC value also corresponding to MB, MB. So, we will get 0.5 plus 0.5. Okay. Now, moving to MB, MC. Here, MC is not there in case star AB. So, we just have to look at the case star BC. So, MB, MC is the value 0.25. Now, MC, MA. MC and MA is not coming in any of the element stiffness matrices. So, we will keep that value as 0. And MC, MB. MC, MB is here in case star BC, which is 0.25. And MC, MC is 0.5. Okay, this is how we develop global stiffness matrices from element stiffness matrix of each element. Okay, so I am just adding up this value and find out the final global stiffness matrix. 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0, 0.25. This one is 1, 0 0.25, 0, 0.25 and 0.5. So, this is our global stiffness matrix for this structure. Okay. Next, moving to the step number 6, that is to calculate fixed end moment and end reaction. And we know how to calculate reaction RA and RB. Here we have UDL with 10 kN per meter load. So, RA and RB will be the half of it. Since it is a, it is a UDL, the total load acting at the center will be 10 into 8, that is 80. So, RA will be 40, RB will be 40. And fixed end moment due to uh, UDL minus W L square by 12 which is coming around minus 53.33 here at this point we will have minus W L square by 12 and here we will have plus W L square by 12 so FEM BA is plus W L square by 12 which is 53.33 kilonewton meter so I am just aggregating and keep it in the matrix named FEM for and see the sequence I have considered is same sequence of local coordinate that I have provided here I have pro provided the first local coordinate VA second local coordinate MA VB and MB so these are the values corresponding to the local coordinates that I have given okay so VA was at A at the, uh, at the point of at the position of VA, we have 40 kN. At the position of MA, we have minus 53. At the position of VB, we have 40. And at the position of MB, we have 53.33. And if we know the fixed end moments, it's very easy to calculate equal and joint load. That is just the opposite sign of the value. So we have same value, but, but with opposite sign. So we have minus 40 plus 53.33 minus 40 and again minus 53.33. Okay, this is the fixed end moment matrix and equivalent joint matrix for AB. In the similar way, we will calculate fixed end moment and end reactions for element BC. But here we have U point load acting at the center. So RA and RB are the half of it, that is 12.5. And FEM MB is minus W L by A, which is minus 25. FEM MC is plus W L by 8 which is plus 25. Okay. So, I am keeping it in a matrix. In the same fashion corresponding to VA, MA, VB and MB. You, if you have named it as 1 star, 2 star, 3 star, 4 star, no matter. You can keep it as 1 star, 2 star, 3 star, 4 star. But the sequence that you are taking should be maintain till the end of this analysis okay so we will obtain the equivalent joint load matrix also just opposite sign of the values okay now we are moving to the last seventh step that is to develop equivalent joint load matrix so for that we have to consider our global stiffness matrix sorry global coordinates that is we have global coordinates only at MB, MA, MB and MC. 
so we will consider only the values corresponding to ma mb and mc and i'm just writing down the only values corresponding to ma mb and mc so we will take the values from equivalent join load of ab ma is corresponding value was 53.33 mb have two values one is one from ab that is minus 53.33 another from bc that is plus 25 so we will add both the values here and for value corresponding to mc was minus 25 so our load equivalent join load matrix or simply load matrix is 53.33 minus 28.33 and minus 25 and in eighth step we will develop the displacement matrix by just applying this equation we have the k matrix finding the inverse and we have the p matrix load matrix now delta is equal to k inverse p and what is this delta delta is the displacement corresponding to each global coordinates so that is our global coordinates were see this this was our structure and our degrees of freedom of freedom to move for this structure is only at a b and c that too it was moment so when you rotate only rotation is possible for this given b okay so when you rotate what is the displacement develop that is the angle theta theta a theta b and theta c these are the displacement that will be getting so from our displacement matrix we will obtain the values of theta a theta b and theta c and the values are this okay when you multiply this k inverse and p you will get the values and all the displacement corresponding to other local coordinates va vb and bc will be zero since they cannot since the displacement is not possible at those local coordinates we have we should know that we corresponding to va vp and vc the displacements are zero okay so that's last step is to find out the element forces so for finding out the element force we have equation k star delta e plus fem k star is the element stiffness matrix of each element delta is the element displacement matrix that is the displacement of each local coordinate in each elements and fixed and moment matrix for each elements okay so let us see what is the displacement matrix element displacement matrix so we have four local coordinates okay we had four local coordinate one at va second at ma third at vb and fourth was at mc mb okay so for first local coordinate the displacement is zero as i told you just before displacement is possible only in the form of rotation and that is only second and fourth coordinate can have displacement and the va that value was obtained in just uh, last step number 8 that is theta and theta b all the displacement at the a and b that is corresponding to 1 and 3 local coordinate for b that va and vc coordinate was zero so this is the displacement element displacement matrix for ab okay so the displacement matrix is obtained by analyzing the displacements possible in this matrix and we have the values for rotations that we just calculated in the last step so the value displacement element displacement matrix for ab is 0 134.839 0 and minus 56.664 okay now we just apply the element forces so the element forces which are obtaining us shear force at a bending moment at a shear force at b and bending moment at b so we just multiply this k star ab with delta e delta ab and we will add it with fem ab fixed and moment of ab element okay so when you calculate this you will get the answer as 32.652 this is the 
shear force at A and zero is the bending moment at A and 47.34 is shear force at B and 58.74 is bending moment at P. Okay. Similarly, for element BC, we will find out the displacement. As I said before, only rotation is possible at B and C. And all the displacements are zero. So, we will keep that same sequence corresponding to VB, MB, VC and MC. Okay. So, we will get the shear force corresponding to B. Shear force at B, bending moment at B, shear force at C and bending moment at C. And by multiplying K star BC with the displacement matrix of BC and add it with fixed end moment of BC. And the answer obtained is 19.863 minus 58.74, 5.147 and 0. So these are the this shear forces and bending moment at the B and C. Shear force at B, shear force at C, bending moment at B and bending moment at C. See, we have shear force and bending moment values directly. So, it's very easy for us to uh, draw the bending moment diagram and shear force diagram. Okay. So, this is all about the analysis of beams by using direct stiffness method.